Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. Miami Dolphins quarterback Bob Greasy has played in 173 games in his iconic career. And when you're a Hall of Famer like he is, there are some games that are absolutely incredible. When you think of his best games, there's probably a few that come to mind. Maybe you think of the 1977 Thanksgiving game against the St. Louis Cardinals, where he threw six touchdown passes and destroyed St. Louis in a 55-14 demolition. Maybe you think of the 1973 regular season finale against the Detroit Lions, where he threw four touchdowns and four incomplete passes. Or maybe you think of the 1978 regular season finale he had against the New England Patriots, where he had a perfect passer rating of 158.3 and threw two touchdowns and one incomplete pass the entire game. However, there is one game that, considering the circumstances, might be more remarkable than them all. There is one game of those 173 that stands out above the rest. On the morning of November 14, 1971, Bob Greasy was in the hospital, completely sleep-deprived, having not eaten in forever, and battling a nasty case of a stomach flu. That afternoon, with no strength in his arm whatsoever, he somehow threw three touchdown passes and led his team off the bench to a critical victory over the Pittsburgh Steelers. And this is the story behind Bob Greasy's flu game. Before I talk about the actual game, we need some context leading up to the game about how Greasy was playing. When the Dolphins drafted Bob Greasy with their first round pick in 1967, he made an immediate impact, making it to the AFL All-Star Game as a rookie. He followed that up in 1968 by throwing for 21 touchdowns, which was the third most in the league, and making his second All-Star Game in two seasons. And in 1970, after three seasons of solid numbers but playing for a losing team, he would finally experience some success in the win column. In 1970, the first season that Don Shula became the head coach, he made the third Pro Bowl of his career and guided Miami to a 10-4 record, where they made it to the postseason for the first time in franchise history. After that surprisingly successful 1970 campaign, for the first time in franchise history, expectations for the Dolphins were high entering 1971. With a three-headed monster to give the ball to with Larry Zonka, Jim Kick, and Mercury Morris, a quarterback who was already playing well despite not being in his prime yet in Bob Greasy, the acquisition of wide receiver Paul Warfield from the Cleveland Browns the previous season, and a top five defense in points allowed, the 1971 season was looking like it was going to be Miami's. And early on, that's exactly what happened. Through the first eight games of the season, Miami was looking like one of the top teams in all of football, sitting at 6-1-1. They had the best winning percentage in the AFC, and were tied with Washington for the best winning percentage in all of football. Their 197 points scored was the second most in the AFC, only 10 points behind the Oakland Raiders atop the conference. And the 82 points allowed was the second best in the AFC and the third best in the NFL, with Minnesota and Baltimore atop in that category at 72 points. But of all the reasons for Miami's success to start the season off, perhaps none were as important as the play of Bob Greasy. He was on pace to have by far the best and most efficient season of his career up until that point. In eight games, he had thrown a touchdown pass in seven of them, and in the four games leading up to the one we're about to talk about, he was the best quarterback in all of football. If he wasn't, he had an awfully good claim to being it. Over that four-game stretch, Miami went 4-0, and Greasy threw nine touchdowns and no interceptions while posting a passer rating of 119.2. This was at a time where the league-wide passer rating was slightly above 62, and here was Greasy nearly doubling that average. In one of those games in that stretch, a 41-3 victory over the New England Patriots, he threw four touchdown passes and had a passer rating of 147.3. Greasy was playing out of his mind, but right before week 9, he was about to face his biggest challenge of the entire season. On November 14, 1971, the Pittsburgh Steelers were scheduled to host the Miami Dolphins at the Orange Bowl in an absolutely critical matchup for both teams. For Pittsburgh, they were 4-4 four four through 8 games, tied with the Cleveland Browns for the lead in the AFC Central. A win here would go a long way in helping Pittsburgh make the postseason for the first time since 1947, and in winning their division for the first time in franchise history. Yes, even though the Steelers had been around since 1933, they had never won the division before. And for Miami, even though they were 6-1-1, they had no room to slip up. The Baltimore Colts were right on their tails for the AFC East title at 6-2, and, and the Kansas City Chiefs, currently on the outside looking into the playoff picture, were only one game back. Miami had little breathing room to work with, so a win here would help somewhat in that department. On November 12th, Bob Greasy was getting ready for the game, and on November 13th, he was not. I think we can all agree that there is nothing fun about having the stomach flu. We've all been there and you feel absolutely terrible. But this wasn't just any case of the stomach flu. Because this case of the stomach flu was so bad that Greasy had to be hospitalized. He didn't eat all day. 
The only thing he was fed throughout the day and night was whatever was in the bottle suspended above Greasy's hospital bed, which was some sort of cloudy liquid delivered to him through a tube. He was on a completely empty stomach and would have to be fed through the bottle by the nurses throughout the day and night. Greasy got no sleep whatsoever and was dealing with one of the nastiest cases of a stomach bug imaginable. When the day of the game rolled around, Greasy, who was working on an all-nighter and who was still feeling sick, was released from the hospital. Now most people in this situation would go back to their house or place of living to get some more rest and wait for the bug to pass in the next few days. But Greasy had something else in mind. Because when Greasy got released from the hospital, he went to the Orange Bowl to join his teammates in this game. Head coach Don Shula decided not to start Greasy. Instead, he trusted the game in the hands of quarterback George Myra, who had experience as a backup for the San Francisco 49ers throughout the 1960s. Most notably, Myra went 2-0 over the final two games in 1967 while filling in for John Brody, and threw five touchdown passes in that stretch. There was no quarterback controversy here or anything like that. Shula just didn't want to start his franchise quarterback who was dealing with a stomach bug and was incredibly sore. Just the thought of getting hit and playing football while dealing with that is borderline insane. But while Myra would start the game, Greasy, against all odds, would be the one to finish it. It was very clear from the moment the game started that Myra was not very good. He played three drives in the first quarter and did not complete a single pass, while also taking a sack. This wide open missed throw says it all right here. There's a reason that this game would be the last time he ever started in the NFL. And with the Dolphins down 14-3 early on, unable to get anything going offensively under Myra's watch, Shula turned to Greasy and asked if he could go. Amazingly enough, Greasy said that he was fine. Greasy working on no sleep, being incredibly dizzy, with a band-aid on his arm, and hospitalized with a stomach bug literally hours before the game, was now coming in for the Dolphins to try and get his team back into it. The bad news was that it didn't start off too well. On the final play of the first quarter, and the first play with Greasy under center, Greasy fumbled the snap, and Andy Russell recovered it for Pittsburgh. The Steelers converted this into a touchdown of their own, and 17 minutes into the game, were leading it 21-3. With the Dolphins trailing by 18 points, it was time for Greasy to work his magic. On the ensuing drive, the Dolphins got past midfield following a catch on a slant pattern by Howard Twilley. After Twilley's 41-yard gain got the crowd back into it, Greasy fired a 12-yard touchdown strike to Paul Warfield to cut it to a 21-10 game. It was clear after this that Greasy was going to finish this game. Myra wasn't going back in. Even if Greasy was at 10% health-wise, and even that might be a stretch, as long as he could stand, he gave Miami its best chance of winning. On Miami's next drive, Greasy drops back to pass and does this. If he was playing with the stomach bug, then he was doing a fantastic job of hiding it, because nobody under those circumstances should be able to make this throw. This throw traveled 56 yards in the air and was caught by Paul Warfield, who did the rest to score his second touchdown of the game, with this one coming from 86 yards out. This play was both the longest touchdown pass of Greasy's career and the longest touchdown catch of Warfield's career. More importantly, it got Miami right back into the game, making it a 21-17 contest at the halftime break. And in the fourth quarter, with the score still 21-17 in favor of the Steelers, Miami was about to take the lead. For the third time today, Bob Greasy hit Paul Warfield on a touchdown pass, with this one coming from 60 yards. This was the Randy Moss against the Cowboys on Thanksgiving stat line nearly three decades before Moss did it, as Warfield finished this game with three receptions for 158 yards and three touchdowns. When all was said and done, the Dolphins had erased an 18-point deficit, and a comeback to win it 24-21. Greasy finished the game with 232 yards passing, three touchdowns, and a pass rating of 107.7. And after the game, all the talk seemed to focus on the miracle that Greasy put on out there. I think even Greasy himself was amazed at what he just did, because after the game, he was visibly sick. He yawned during the post-game press conference, not because he was bored or was insulted with the reporters, but because he had no sleep from the previous night before at the hospital. He said that he did not get a restful night, which seems to be an understatement considering all that he went through. Greasy said that he was being fed through a tube, and gagged at the thought of even eating. So the fact that he was able to throw three touchdown passes under those circumstances is absolutely insane. And when the stomach bug passed and Greasy was fully healthy again, he was back in the starting lineup, and was picking up right where he left off. Miami won their next two games in a row after the Steelers game, and over the course of that eight-game winning streak that the Dolphins had that all but solidified their spot in the postseason, Greasy threw 17 touchdowns and just 4 interceptions, finishing the streak with a 115.7 passer rating. It's no surprise with those numbers that not only did he make it to the Pro Bowl for the fourth time in five years, but he was named a first-team All-Pro for the first time in his career as well. And with Greasy under center, the Dolphins wound up advancing to Super Bowl VI, 
making it to their first Super Bowl in franchise history. Greasy would play nine more seasons in Miami, and I'm not going to dive too much into that, since I already did a video on Greasy's tenure with the Dolphins, which you can learn more about by clicking the card in the upper right corner. But in his Hall of Fame career, even though not too many people talk about this scheme, and even though it's not the prettiest stat line of his career, this might be the best scheme that he ever played. In a must-win situation, to erase an 18-point deficit off of the bench and throw three touchdowns while being incredibly sick is nuts. The next time you get the stomach bug and you're lying down in bed in pain, just think of Greasy and what he did under those same conditions. Because Bob Greasy was just built differently. Get your official Jaguar Gear 9 merchandise by going to jj9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Monday and Tuesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at jrgear9, and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters who help get the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.